it seems that you're we're definitely leaving some past circumstances behind eight of cups and we're working very hard at that eight of pentacles because it feels like we're bound and determined to change the karma the change the karmic cycle for us this is not necessarily just for us as individuals they're also for the betterment of the collective but that is more of a long-term type situation like the more each one of us does this on our own that energy builds up as a collective and it starts to create a shift in momentum for everyone, for the whole world, right? For all of society, the Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your day or for your moment whenever you're guided to watch this reading, yeah? Please keep in, please keep in mind that this is a that this wow I cannot speak today. Hold on, let me let me let me try and enunciate a little better. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, like I said, this is a timeless reading. So whenever you're guided to watch this reading, then and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment. Yes. Happy Monday, everyone. I hope you all had a good weekend. Um, I don't really have anything. Um, I don't really have anything new to bring to the collective right now. Um, for those of you that weren't, that aren't on Instagram that, um, or are not following me on Instagram and did not see, um, what I posted, I went live briefly for like 15 minutes. I think it was on Friday or something. Um, but because I wanted to share a quick message with the collective, um, and I hadn't been live on Instagram in a while. Um, and I do, and after doing that, I do feel the pull to do more lives on Instagram. Just do more, just do more. Like I, what I feel like right now is I kind of just want to do like random readings, just go live randomly whenever I feel inspired to, whenever I feel called to, if there's a specific message that wants to come through, just go live and just do a reading. It doesn't have to have an agenda, whatever is being called for in the moment. Um, I used to try and keep Instagram and YouTube kind of on the same page. But um, first of all, they're two different platforms. Um, and second of all, it's not all that practical anymore. Um, I used to be able to download the live streams. The last live stream I went, the last time I went live on Instagram, I wasn't able to download the live stream. So it doesn't even look like I can, you know, share the same content to both, plat both platforms anymore anyway. So anyway, um, but in that live stream, um, I did bring, I had a, there was a message that came through for the collective in terms of in, in dealing with or navigating these rough energies or this rough time period of change and integration and upgrading and all that stuff. Um, in order to, uh, a really, really great method of being able to deal with that is spending time with nature, as much time with nature as you can. The plants and the animal kingdom are your greatest allies right now. I know for many of us, um, that is all the, all, I mean, I, I don't want to, obviously don't speak for everybody here. Um, however, we all seem to be on the same page or on a similar, if not the same wavelength. So many of y'all will understand this, but I'm finding for me, it's, it's much more pleasant limiting the amount of time that I spend with other people and, uh, spending the rest of it with nature like my cats and all the other wild animals that are around here and all the plants. I mean, me and the bugs, we're starting to get along, but like, I don't know about that part. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But like, I don't know. Spending time in nature right now is really going to be your best friend, your greatest ally. Um, and I, I really just feel like being around people right now is just exhausting. And it's not, it's not, for any, it's not really for any other reason other than the fact of there's so much that's shifting and changing. There's so much that's going on with all of us as individuals, okay? Whether you are part of this group of the collective that we, in, in which we commune here all the time, or it's, it's the greater whole. Like, everybody is going through some shit right now. There is a lot of change, there's a lot of shift, shifting, a lot of changing that's happening. Um, and what I'm picking up on here is just like energetically, 
there's so much happening on a cellular level on a even maybe even a dna level like i'm seeing what i'm seeing is i'm seeing figures of human bodies and the energy within each individual human is like going nuts and like there's all kinds of stuff there's shifts that there are shifts that are happening there are changes that are happening there are upgrades that are happening and, and, and everybody's everybody's on their own like real wild ride right now so just because of that just that alone when our bodies or when when we get together or when we come in cl closer contact with another human we might be okay for you know a little bit but then all of a sudden you might feel drained you might feel like your your mind is getting foggy um you're having trouble concentrating when you normally don't have com trouble concentrating um in that and, and any i mean it could be a bunch of other symptoms you may start getting headaches um, you may just start feeling low or depressed or just really tired, like you want to lay down, like you need to take a break. Mental fog is a big one uh, that I'm picking up on. But it's because what's going on within each of us individually is reacting to each other as when we get closer. And, and so that kind of like some it puts a little bit of an extra strain on us as we're dealing with these shifts. I don't want that to sound like we're we're telling you to like stay away from people to not hang out with your friends to not go do that this that and the third like we're not saying that but the potential for extra fatigue is higher right now because of all the shifts and all the changes that we're going through so i say all that to say spending as much time with nature as you can right now is a wonderful wonderful aspect it's extremely recharging you guys like i can't even begin to tell you i went out to hang out with my with some friends and there's a friend in town right now so i went out on saturday night we all we went down to one of the the bars i had a few i had some drinks i had dinner with that with everybody and then we ended up at another bar another local really awesome hangout with some really dope house music love that but um, and I, I mean, I was out much later than, than I had been in a very long time, um, and much later than I had actually intended to be out, but it just happened that way. So I was just going with the flow, like whatever. I didn't leave until like around midnight. Um, and like I said, that's pretty out of character for me at this point. Um, but, but I spent all of yesterday recuperating, like I had to completely check out of all signs of interpersonal communication or what like I had to completely check out from being a human yesterday <laughs> because I was so drained from just being out on one Saturday night you know what I mean like and I and I I personally understand that I'm shifting and changing like I'm getting older and a lot of a lot of that energy of like being out all night and like shutting down the bar and you know getting wasted and like acting crazy and like that's not me anymore so like I get that, but at the same time, on an energetic level, there was so much interaction, interference, there was just so much going on, it was just so much to handle that yesterday I literally completely checked out and spent the whole day to myself just trying to recuperate and recover because I was so drained from that interaction the night before. So And, and that is really just... I mean, partially it's me, but also it's a part, it's a, it's an element of the shits and the changing and okay. So what I'm also getting here, you guys, this is okay. So let's call this channeled message section. I might, I might just start having a channeled session message session like before, before morning coffee. But anyway, the other thing that I'm getting for the collective right now is that for some of you, you really have just shifted. You've changed. Okay, like, I mean, you've changed. And you, and see, here's the thing, you guys. As we're doing this work, you may not be consciously aware of it, but as you're doing this internal work, this healing work, uh, this self-mastery, this three of pentacles type of work, you are stepping your vibration up incrementally, slowly but surely, one step, one increment at a time. I don't know how we're measuring these increments, okay? But one step at a time, right? And so before you know it, a certain amount of time goes by, a week goes by, a month goes by, a few months goes by, and your vibe is much higher than it was a few months ago, right? When you started the process or whatever. 
And you're going to notice that when you go out to certain places that you used to love to be around that, um, you know, that, you know, it was your, this was like your stomping ground. You know, you were always here on a Friday, Saturday night. If you could have been there every night, you would have like you hanging out with certain people, doing certain activities with certain people and stuff, things that you used to love to do are no longer in alignment with you. Because technically, they are, a, they are of a lower vibe. And I don't want anybody to think that we're being elitists, that we're saying anybody is better than anybody else, that any activity is better than anybody else, that all y'all are just some low vibrational POSs and we ain't trying to talk to you. Like, that is not even what we're trying to say, you guys, okay? But, and, and, it, and this could also be a situation or a type of energy where you wouldn't even notice. You wouldn't have even noticed how actual low vibe it may be until you've risen above it and now you put yourself back in that situation and you're like, whoa, when did this get, when did this get so low vibe? When did this get so toxic? When did this get X, Y, and Z? And it's like, well, honey, it was always that way. You just never realized it. You didn't see it before. You couldn't see it before. You couldn't see it before. And that's not a bad thing of no fault to no fault of your own, to no fault of anybody else involved. It's just the reality of the situation. Now that you've stepped above it, you can look back on it and say, oh, I get it now. No, no shade. Like increment. This is this is us literally incrementally stepping our way up the ladder. OK, so that's a part of the that's a. Uh, oh, 1111. That's an element of the situation too, you guys. All right. Cute. Okay. That was a cute little channeled message. I like that. So let's, um, let's move forward. I definitely want to pull, I don't, uh, okay. So I didn't even, I didn't even know I was going to say all that. I don't have an agenda for the collective right now. I just want to collect with the connective. I want to collect with the collective connect with the with source god source creator and and bring forward the messages that source has for the collective at this time yeah cool we're going to be using the revelations tarot today um getting clarity from the los garabeo and then cross crossing the oracle bridge when we get there yeah cool let's get into this guys and see what we've got for the collective for two j skis all right here we go Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, circumstances, relationships, romances, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, kids, I'm gonna give this five shuffles for us. This is one. Now, immediately as I'm connecting with the collective, I'm seeing yellow. As soon as I started getting into the mode of like, all right, we're getting into the reading, what's going on with the collective, let's connect with the collective, I was seeing yellow. And the only thing that I can really deduce from just the color, this is two, is that we're dealing with willpower, we're dealing with our drive, we are, okay, so, okay, fine-tuning the process is what I just heard. This is three. So it seems that there is some sort of, there's a level of fine-tuning your action steps, the action steps that you embark on, the action steps that you're taking. This is four. Um, how it is you're moving forward here, I, what I feel like, because also what I was seeing for the collective is green, a little bit of green. And so there's heart chakra energy involved with this willpower uh, uh, focus. And what I feel like here is you are, or 
individuals within the collective are fine-tuning your willpower, fine-tuning what it is you give your power and your energy to and what you don't. And what you don't give your power and your energy to. And this is being directed in or and or it's being directed or guided by your heart chakra, by the center of your system, which is in fact your heart chakra. At least when we're, when we're talking about the physical body and the seven core energy centers, the fourth one, your heart chakra is the center of your system. The heart chakra is the bridge between the lower, but the, the lower energy centers and the higher energy centers. Your your heart chakra is literally the uh, the center, the, the the energy center that combines the higher cosmic energies with the uh, earthly uh, uh, physical energies. Okay, so fine tuning your willpower is what I'm picking up on here with this yellow yellow energy. This is for uh, being very closely conscious, watching very carefully what it is you do give your power, your energy, your attention to, and what it is you do not. This is five. And, and the, the point here, sorry, that didn't work. This is five. The point here with this heart chakra focus, the reason why it's so important to make sure that we keep in mind or we notice, we take notice of the fact that the heart chakra is directly involved here at this point is because many of us have grown, have developed, have, have risen, have developed our awareness or, or um, expanded our awareness to a higher place where our heart chakra can be the root of everything, can be the center of everything. And so now this is happening, this is a very different type of energy right now than it may have been in the past where you were working with the, your willpower but straight, strictly from your ego. Maybe not strictly from your ego, but at least at this point, your ego is not in the driver's seat or maybe is less involved or less in the driver's seat than it may have been in the past. Regardless as to where you are, let's speak, let's talk about this, let's quantify it in, in realms of percentage. Regardless in however much of a dominant percentage your heart chakra is, is, is um, holding right now, okay, it doesn't matter where you are specifically, I hope this is making sense, but what it feels like here is that your heart chakra is dominating. Okay, it could be 51% dominance, it could be 60%, it could be 70, it could be 80, it could be 90. Everybody's at a different place in their journey, okay, in the field. But your heart is leading the way here. That is what is the, that, that is the, um, the point. That's what is needing to be understood. The heart is leading the way here at this point, all right? Pause for a second. Okay, cool. So let's move forward here. All right. Excellent. All right, Spirit. So what messages do you have for the collective at this time? God, Source, Creator, what messages do you have for the collective at this time? What's going on with the collective right now? What's going on with the collective right now? Okay. Okay. I like this. I like this, you guys. I really like this. Holy shit. I really like this. All right. So there, there might be... A little bit of what I'm hearing are spiteful, uh, maybe some vengeful energies. Um, and what I want to say is these are natural, okay? These are energies that are natural to the human experience. I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody connecting with this message right now sinking into any sort of spiritual bypassing, okay? I want you to focus on and feel each and every emotion that comes up for you, no matter how low or high vibrational it may be, okay? You are a spiritual being that has incarnated into this physical body in order to have a physical experience. And you did that, you incarnated within the third dimension, the third dimension is not the fourth dimension, is not the fifth dimension, is not the sixth dimension, is not the seventh dimension. So for any of, so any of us to sit here and say to ourselves that we cannot experience or feel or move through that which is of the third dimension, fourth, third, second, third dimension, 
because we're on this ascension pathway, that is spiritual bypassing. Okay? You are, at, you are literally rejecting elements of the vibration and dimension that you incarnated to specifically in order to have a specific experience within this incarnation. So don't, or within this specific dimension, okay? So throwing away any sort of element of a, of a given uh, uh, dimension just because it's low vibrational, that's spiritual bypassing. You are meant to experience every element of that dimension that you, are, you, you, you incarnate within because it all has a purpose. If you, wanted, if you needed or if you were ready to experience uh, energies or topics or situations of the sixth dimension, then you would be focused there right now. But your, fo your conscious focus is here in this incarnation for a specific reason. To have the experiences that you need to experience in order to get to the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth dimensions, right? Those are all going to come in time, but you're not going to get there if you're, if you're bypassing the energies of where you find yourself in the current moment, okay? So, I hope that made sense. But what I want you guys to do is I want you to feel through everything it is that you're experiencing. Okay, because you are, in fact, rising out of the old experiences. First two cards that came out here are the Page of Wands and the Ten of Swords. Okay, the Ten of Swords is the completion. The Ten of Swords is the ending of rough situations, of tough situations, maybe of lower vibrational situations. Um, yes, and that, and that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Like, not when I say that you were dealing with lower vibrational situations in the past... It was literally you working your way up the consciousness ladder, okay? We started from we started from the first dimension and now we're working our way up. And you can't skip anything, right? So even though we're talking about these low vibrational, rough and tumble, tough, destructive, painful energies, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad, okay? The denser you are, the lower in vibration you are, the more physical things become, which means the more suffering, the more pain, the more struggle you have the potential to experience, okay? We're literally working our way up the ascension ladder here. And coming out of the lower, tougher, rough and tumble elements, right, that often are often shown as ten the Ten of Swords to us. Why? Because we're spiritual beings. Okay, we come from originally we come from much higher dimensions where you don't have situations like you find here on Earth in this time period, in this dimension. You, you guys, it, you guys get what I'm saying. Ten of Swords. That's what the Ten of Swords is representing. The Ten of Swords is representing the lower vibrational, more dense, more um, uh, energetically solid, which is the same as dense. Uh, maybe more difficult, potentially more painful, that type of energy. Moving out of that, coming out of that, being, but, but coming out of it, not just coming out of it, but coming out of it having been re-identified or re-identifying yourself as you emerge from this. Page of Wands, Ten of Swords, Page of Wands. And this is happening because you recognize, you see clearly, I can see clearly now the rain is gone, the sun and the ten of wands, what was holding you back in the past? I heard with the ten of wands, the brambles that were clouding your vision, that were holding you back, that were keeping you from moving you forward, keeping you in some sort of sense of struggle, just keeping you rooted to the ground, but not in a grounded sort of way, just in a restrictive sort of way. But now you see through that. Okay, what I'm getting with the sun and the ten of wands is you see very clearly where you're getting snagged, where you're getting caught up, where your where your where your robes are getting caught on the uh, in, uh, on the path, and you're not able, and it's like keeping you from like moving forward. You have to like yank it off, like you know what I mean. Where you're getting tripped up, where you may be literally being held back vibrationally or energetically. Okay. Uh, overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Page of Cups. Uh, what I'm hearing with that is uh, a new emotional reality. 
Okay, so if you look here on this cup, or I'm sorry, on this card, there are two individuals. There's one that's swimming. It seems, it looks like she's swimming to the surface. There are two mermaids, excuse me. One looks like she's swimming to the surface, okay, with a cup in her hand. The other one looks like she's swimming deeper into the depths. And the one on the bottom that looks like she's swimming deeper is blindfolded. Yes, she's blindfolded. The one swimming up to the surface, it seems, Oh, I see. So what's happening here is the one that's swimming down to the bottom is swimming down to the bottom of the, the deepest depths. Yeah, it looks like she's about to get snagged by an octopus. Yikes, we talked about that. Did we talk about that? Wait, where did we talk about that? We talked about that in um, your week ahead on Saturday. If you guys haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that out. It's a weekly reading for all signs. And one of the signs, it was cancer. Can, the, the Cancerians, the, the Cancer reading for that was somebody that has really bad boundaries or something or a lack of boundaries. And we were reading about the octopus card. Okay, that's what that was. But on this card here, she's going down. It looks like she's about to, you know, uncover or like dig out a cup from the ground. Anyway, the other one is moving up to the surface and she's not blindfolded. And what I'm seeing with the Page of Cups here for the collective is that we have this new understanding, this cup in the Page of Cups is representing a new re emotional reality. It's also representing a new emotional, um, a, a new sense of emotional awareness. And that's where the heart chakra is coming in, okay? So what I feel like here is you've, you've, you've reached this level of, uh, of deeper emotional understanding or stronger emotional awareness, and now you're rising up from the depths of the ocean with this brand new cup that you've discovered, promoting this cup. Like literally, you see how she's taking this cup and pushing it upwards almost as if she's handing it to someone or trying to bring it to the surface? That's what I feel like you're doing here, Collective. We are promote, we've come to a, a deeper emotional understanding. We're re-identifying ourselves, Page of Wands, through the, the Ten of Swords, the rough and tumble energies, okay? And now we have this new emotional understanding that we're slowly but surely bringing to the surface to be our dominant form of expression. Page of Cups. Underneath the Page of Cups is the Four of Swords and the Three of Cups. With the High Priestess and the Ace of Pentacles to the Hermit and the Ace of Wands and the Ace of Swords. Holy shit. And the Three of Swords. I'm sorry. The Three of Pentacles. The Three of Wands. The Wheel of Fortune. The Eight of Pentacles. The Eight of Cups. The Fool. Holy shit. Strength. King of Wands. You guys, I could literally keep going. Seven of Pentacles. The Star. <sighs> wow, you guys. This is really excellent. So... Based, so the gist of this story here at the bottom of the deck is basically holding, standing your ground, being very confident in yourself, um, having your ego in check, being extremely confident in yourself, like I said, and taking a leap of faith. The Fool, Strength, and the King of Wands. Okay. Um, it seems that you're, we're definitely leaving some past circumstances behind. Eight of Cups, yes. And we're working very hard at that. Eight of Pentacles, because it feels like we're bound and determined to change the karma, the change the karmic cycle for us. And this, uh, what I also just got, I just got an intuitive hit. This is not necessarily just for us as individuals. This is on, uh, at least from the point of view of our higher selves collectively, whatever it is we're changing, whether you find yourself on the path of service to self, I'm sorry, the path of service to others. The path of service to self, really, that should be included in, in, to a certain degree. Okay, um, the path, but mainly the path of service to others or the path of service to, to God's source creator. From a higher self point of view, any sort of changes that you're making, that you're implementing are not just for your own betterment, but they're also for the betterment of the collective. But that is more of a long-term type situation. Like, like you're making changes for yourself, realigning yourself that are going to bring more immediate results to your life specifically. But the more each one of us does this on our own, that energy builds up as a collective and it starts to create a shift in momentum for everyone, for the whole world, right? For all of society, the Wheel of Fortune, okay? Wheel of Fortune, Three of Wands, Three of Pentacles. This is all about being on your path 
and, and continuing with your self-mastery because you understand Ace of Swords, Ace of Wands. You know, you learn quite a bit with the Hermit, okay? And, and the Ace of Pentacles. You have three Aces here. Ace of Wands, Ace of Swords, Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Swords is the truth, the knowledge, and the wisdom, and the understanding. The Ace of Wands is the inspiration to move in a new direction. The Ace of Pentacles is... New business ventures, new monetary gain, a better a better financial future, a better relationship with money and finances, a brand new start, a new reality, all that kind of stuff, right? But all of that comes from your sense of self-awareness, the hermit, okay? Which also brings you clarity with the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Wands. But let's, but then, but I said all of that because I wanted to talk about these cards here. What's immediate at the immediately at the top or at the at the bottom of the deck? You have the Page of Cups, the Three of Swords. I'm sorry, the Four of Swords, the Three of Cups, and then the High Priestess. There is a social element to all of this, you guys. Just like I was saying, for some of us, we're, we're we get around people and it, it it like it extra super fries us. Some of us are are just like that. We have to we spend time with people and then we have to go back home and recharge because we have to recharge our social batteries, right? That may be even stronger now. You may find yourself depleting so much faster and so much more than you normally would. First of all, that is an element of reaching a higher vibrational level. Second of all, that's also an element of the fact that everybody's going through their own shit and it's affecting each other. It's and it's not it's not a bad thing. It's just it's it's having its effects on each other. But there are a lot of us that are here that are saying, whoa, 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 whoa. What are these? I literally just heard, what are these karmic social ties that I have around me? You're promoting a brand new sense of emotional awareness in your life, page of cups. But then, but as you do that, that's causing you to stop for a second, four of swords and be like, oh, okay, who are these people around me? Three of cups. What is this social circle I have around me? And then the high priestess comes in and is just like, yeah, who are these people? What is going on here? But if you, if you do find yourself in this place where you're questioning uh, social ties right now, the high priestess or the universe is standing here saying, we see what's going on here, but we're not going to give you the answer. We, you need to, to choose for yourself here. And I don't mean to cause panic. I don't mean to frighten anybody. But the way that you, what, the choice that you make here is going to dictate what lessons you either repeat or what new lessons you tackle, you take on as you move forward. But what the universe wants to reassure you is if you find yourself in this position where you're questioning, consciously questioning social ties, right? The universe wants it wants to make it very clear that this is not some sort of like test where you pass or fail and if you make the wrong decision now you get uh like a whole new cycle of bullshit of terrible terrible things it's not it's not within the realm of pro crime and punishment where like if you don't make the right decision you're fucked like that's not the way the universe is seeing this it's literally just um a placement test Okay, you're reaching another level, a, an assessment test. It's just a, a matter of let's just assess and see where you are. What have you gotten under your belt? What have you mastered? And what do you still need work on? What does what still needs some fine tuning? Okay, it's not this ridiculously competitive pass fail type energy that humanity, like the ego and the conscious mind, has put on things doesn't work that way when it comes to the universe, okay? So if you find yourself in a position right now where you're really questioning those karmic ties, those ties to the people socially that you have been questioning for the longest time or you're questioning now for the first time but it's a real serious question, just keep that in mind. This is just a moment where we're seeing we are assessing where you are proficient and where you need a little more fine tuning. That's it, says the high priestess, okay? But this is all... This is all in service of promoting this new emotional reality. Okay, cool. All right, let's move forward here. I these, I swear, morning coffee has been ridiculously long lately, but that's okay. 
the collective need is it. The collective needs it. Right. Okay, cool. So, but I don't want to make it too long. So I'm going to, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to wrap this up. We're going to go to, we're going to move on to our clarification right quick. I just want to get a little bit more clarity, a little more understanding with the Ten of Swords and Page of Wands here. Respectfully, respect, uh, of the Ten of Wands and Page of Wands. Wow, Eric. Ten of Swords and Page of Wands. And then the Sun and the Ten of Wands, respectively. Right? Okay. Uh, five shuffles. One. This is two. This is three. Excuse me, this is four. And this is five. All right, kids. Ten of Swords, let's start with the Ten of Swords and the Page of Wands. Yeah, what other extra clarity can you bring forward to the collective in terms of the Ten of Swords and the Page of Wands, please, Spirit? What is this Ten of Swords, Page of Wands energy? Okay. Okay. Anything else? Good. Anything else? Okay, we do have the Five of Cups, um, which kind of makes sense because, interesting, because you have the Ten of Swords here and you have the Page of Wands. This is what we're clarifying. Um, it, there are things that are coming to an end. There are things that are coming to a close and it may be fairly shocking, um, but you do have the Five of Cups here which is talking about grief, remorse. However, what I feel here, you guys, is this is more of grief and remorse in terms of the people around you um, or the situations or circumstances that are coming to a close. I really don't feel like it's your energy. I feel like it's the energy of others who may, have, may be having trouble letting you go. Um, but you have the two of wands to clarify what the what the clarify clarity is here you have the two of wands you have the tower you have judgment you have the king of wands but then you also have the ace of cups which has fallen out in reverse and that also fell face down um this is very interesting but what i'm getting from this what i'm getting from this is ten of swords page of wands things Whatever is closing out for you right now may really be, you may have, may be having a difficult time with it. It may be a little bit of a struggle. There may be some people that are putting up a fight. You may be experiencing some sort of resistance. But what I'm feeling here is any sort of resistance that you may be feeling, I feel number one is residual. I did just hear that. Um, it's leftover. But again, it doesn't feel like it's your energy. I don't feel like you're the one being resistant. I feel like there are certain karmic ties, certain karmic situations. Um, karma in general is really what I want to say that may be trying, well, not the karma itself. It's the individuals involved or the negative entities that could be attached to these individuals that are still trying to hold on to you or hold on to the situation i'm hearing things like not letting go without a fight but that's an element of um that's an element of why the tower is here because what i'm feeling here you guys is also there is divine intervention involved with this shift in your life whether this be from ties with uh interpersonal relationships or just situations, circumstances, maybe even a job or something like that. Um, this is not something that you could necessarily break down all on your own. There needs to be some sort of divine intervention. And so that's why, okay, okay, that's fine. But the message here is that, the clarity here is that the decision has been made. 
And it's, again, a decision that's divinely orchestrated or there's divine intervention involved because you have the tower and you have judgment here with the two of wands. And then the king of wands. The king of wands, and this is where, it, and this is where the, the, the ace of cups in reverse is coming into play. Because how you're moving forward, given the change that's happening or given the decision that has been made here, it's not coming from a place of ushy gushy love and compassion. And this way, this is this may be why it seems counterintuitive to what we've been talking about in this reading, especially since we started with everything being guided with the heart chakra right now. But what I'm getting with this Ace of Cups in reverse is that in the past, you have been snagged by situations like this with the, 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 the energies of unconditional love. But that was just negative, low vibrational, dark entities making a mockery of unconditional love. Well, if you love me, you'd stay. If you love me unconditionally, you wouldn't leave. If you love me unconditionally, you'd still be my friend. If you love me unconditionally, or if you loved us un unconditionally, you'd still be part of the family, this, that, and the third. That's gaslighting. That's manipulation. So what it feels like here, even though as we're moving forward, our hearts are leading the way, there's a level of naive, like uh, of naivety Naivety, whatever, however you pronounce that word, that is not involved here. And that's what the Ace of Cups in reverse represents. And that's why you have it with the King of Wands upright and, and everything like that. Because it's like no matter who may be trying to hold on to you, keep their claws in you, snag you with emotional manipulation and whatnot, whatever, Five of Cups, don't worry about it. Don't let it happen. And that's why I feel like it's not your energy. It's energy outside of you because I feel like your energy is here. King of Wands. The Fool is also underneath this Five of Cups here. Underneath the Fool is the Ace of Pentacles to the Emperor to the Sun. You guys, I really feel like you're moving towards something completely brand new. Ace of Pentacles again here. It's a whole new reality. This could be, like I said, this could be a new financial situation or something, but you just need to keep confidently moving because this is your energy right here, King of Wands. And I definitely feel like the universe has your back. And that's why you can confidently stand in the King of Wands and know you're moving in the right direction. Okay, in the face of this, Five of Cups. The woe is me, the crying over spilt milk, like everything, it's all a disaster, that kind of thing. How could you leave me like this, that, you know? Okay, last but not least, in terms of clarification, let's talk about the sun and the ten of wands, yeah? What clarity do you have for the collective in terms of the sun and the ten of wands, please, spirit? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Anything else, spirit? Here's the deal. You have the Page of Swords at the bottom of the deck. Uh, page of Wands, Page of Swords, Page of Cups. Okay, we got all, we got three of the pages, not all four. We have the Page of Wands, the Page of Cups, and now the Page of Swords showing up in this reading. So to me, that's talking about a lot of brand new energy, a lot of change in perspective is what I just heard, especially with this Page of Swords energy. Because I feel like this Page of Swords energy is also you. It's your, it's, there's a sentry that has been put out. There are, there's surveillance that's happening here. And that surveillance is all, um, is all programmed to benefit or to preserve the foundation you found within yourself, Four of Wands, and the alignment that you found within yourself, Queen of Wands. Okay, this is all overall energy. Um, and also... Okay, we don't need to go that far. Um, page, of, page of Swords, Four of Wands, Queen of Wands. This is all in an effort to preserve the foundation you've built for yourself up until this point. Okay? The foundation and the alignment you've cultivated for yourself up until this point. Clarifying this Sun and the Ten of Wands here, you have first card out is the Empress. And the Empress is representing you giving birth to something new. Which would be why you need to keep a scout out. Keep a lookout, okay? Because you can't let, you can't allow anything 
any of the low vibrational shit or any of the old stuff, the toxic elements or whatever from the past that you've grown out of, you can't allow any of that back in to poison the fertile soil that you're growing the new within. Okay? And spirit's not giving me a timeline. I, what I'm getting with this is that we are, if you're connecting, if you're resonating with this reading right now, um, then you are definitely cultivating a brand new life for yourself. There's something gestating. There's something growing that you are giving life to, that you're giving birth to right now. Okay. And so this overall energy with the four of swords, I'm sorry, with the page of swords here is keeping at bay the energies that only held you down in the past, the sun and the ten of wands. Keeping a lookout for that. And then the queen of swords here makes the cuts. So the sentry in the overall energy, the page of swords, is the lookout. Right? Brings the intel to the queen of swords that slices right through the illusion, the moon, that the collective may bring you. Ten of Cups, or the Ten of Cups represents your ultimate wish fulfillment, where it is you ultimately want to go, your ultimate emotional fulfillment. So in that case, then, the Queen of Swords would be slicing through the illusions of the moon in preservation of not only your Four of Wands, your spiritual foundation, your Queen of Wands, your alignment, but ultimately preserving where it is you want to get to, you want to receive, you want to achieve, you whatever you want to be emotionally ten of cups whatever your ten of cups is you're built you're cultivating you're giving birth to this ten of cups it does feel like it's off in the future you guys i'm not gonna sit here and say "Ooh, i feel it coming it's gonna be here in the next few weeks or something like no 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 no, no. this is a long-term goal is what it feels like here all right but you understand that that's where your solidness that's where your four of wands your foundation comes into play because it's not about instant gratification it's not about just getting it now to feel better it's about working your way there and recognizing the need for that process and recognizing the need for this moment in your process to continue to keep all of the old energy sufficiently at bay to get that to have that be uh, a belief system or a structure that's built up and is good and it's in place that doesn't need to be forcibly broken down later on. You know what I mean? Like, let's take the time to build up that sufficient boundary so in, later on in the future, once that's good, we don't even have to worry about it, right? These are the preliminary phases. Excellent. What do we want to close our reading with? Oracle Guidance is coming from the Crystal Manzuala deck. Yes? I put... This is, this is backwards. Okay. Woohoo! All right, y'all. This is upside down. I'm going to give this five shuffles here, and we will get our closing Oracle Guidance. Yeah? This is one. This is... A two C's. This is three. Four. And five. All right, y'all. Closing Oracle Guidance for today's message, for today's session, for today's lesson. Card number 13, this is one of my favorite cards. Card number 13, which is the number of death and transformation, right? And it is Archangel Anachio and Tiger's Eye. Tiger spirit arises. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's read it. We bring you the gift of the tiger spirit rising. You are being empowered with a truth more potent than fear. Your spirit is rapidly expanding beyond what opinion and logic can contain. It needs to be free to run wild with divine grace in the world. Your life 
your destiny, your divine fulfillment requires that you have the courage to roar for love, to refuse to be put down, to respect yourself, and to let your untamed loving heart be free. Your spirit creates a field of divine electricity through your body and mind that can liberate others from conformity and social conditioning, allowing them to break away from systems based in control and fear. As your tiger spirit rises, you excite and empower the tiger spirit in others to rise above conditioning as they discover the wild, divine spirit being they are in truth. And as I was say, as I was reading through that, something came to mind very clearly. We are not doing this in any other way than by showing by example. Or at least as I was reading through that, spirit was coming through with a reminder that this doesn't have to happen by standing on a soapbox, <laughs> standing on a soapbox and preaching, trying to shove the information down people's throats like trying to shove the trying to force people to accept this this understanding of sovereignty like you don't have to do that but all you got to do is show by example and that's just by li leading your life or living your life saying no when you feel like saying no holding that boundary when you feel you need to hold that boundary where you may not have in the past right okay Let's see, is there anything else we want to read in here? Ah, here we go. Okay, let's read this. When this oracle comes to you, there is an opportunity to break away from the tribe, to step into your divine destiny in a new way. In time, you will connect with a new conscious crew, but you may have to take some steps on your own for a while. It is going to take courage, but you have that in abundance. It might startle some people around you who don't understand what you are choosing or why. You might not even know exactly why yourself. If you feel an instinct within for growth, trust it. Your wild tiger spirit is rising and this is lifting you out of the world you have known into a time of increasing vibrancy and radiant loving life. Roar loud and proud. Your kindred tiger spirit souls will hear you and be drawn to your light. Excellent, you guys. So there you have it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so freaking much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>